I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the prophet of the Restoration and founder of the LDS Church, the church I served as a bishop for five years. I knew the church was true. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. My life has been built on certain truths, but wishing doesn't change the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. When I finally learned the truth about the real history and doctrines of Mormonism, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have come to learn that many others have made a similar journey out of the bondage of religion and into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about. Courageous people who want to share their story, hoping that you, the viewer, will discover the same new life in Jesus. So if you're a Latter-day Saint who is struggling with questions or seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we invite you to join us tonight. We have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I am your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you spending some time with us. Last week, we were introduced to Delaney McCraney, and what a delightful young lady she was. And her older sister, not the oldest sister, but her older sister is Cassidy McCraney, and she's our guest today. And so we welcome you and Hello. appreciate you coming. One other interesting little fact is that Cassidy was my producer of this show <laughs> the first two years back in 2012. And we did so many shows that we actually were able to go all the way through 2013. And That's crazy. Yeah, it was great. We didn't run nearly a, a great this thing you got going on here. It's awesome. Well, this is, we appreciate great. the... Mill Creek Baptist Church for allowing us space here and we appreciate them so much but we were over at TV 20 and doing yeah, that show uh -huh. and you were producing and Good you times. were quite involved with the uh, with the ministry there and yeah you were you know, what, what, what were you doing on for Sean McCraney's show the heart of the matter I would do sound and I would make the videos which I still do I make short spots for my dad's ministry and yeah things like that, but yeah, yeah, just kind of in the background and learning, and so yeah. TV20 had a great, it was such a great learning experience. I that learned so good. much yeah. with directing and yeah. you, graphics. And you produced some shows and stuff too, didn't you? Yeah, and, yeah, we did, did some, some stuff movies and, and movies and yeah. yeah. Well, gee, yeah, you're quite talented and you're still a young lady and yet you're so <laughs> involved in things. and. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so I guess as we usually do, just start out, where, where were you born and what was your background a little bit? Uh, I was born at Hoke Hospital okay. in Newport Beach and grew up in Huntington Beach. Did you? And that's where you went to high school? And... Went to high school, uh, yeah. born in the Covenant. Were you? Mom born... and Dad were married in the temple. Married yeah. in the temple. Were they proud of that? Did they ever talk about the temple? And You know, I don't really recall them talking about the temple. We would drive by. They go back? Did they go back much? Did yeah, they would go to the temple and we would drive by the LA temple every once in a while where they were married. Yeah. And oh, that's where they were married. But um, no, but I enjoyed going to the, I mean, I really enjoyed like baptisms for the dead. You and did that? I loved that stuff. Did you really? Oh, I loved it. I loved the dances. I loved I the social aspect. Just of, great. Yeah. yeah. Really fun. Yeah, it is interesting. And so you were active in primary and young women? Or? Yes, our our family actually was very active. My mom uh, did the music and for stake plays and primary. Oh, my did grandma, she really? oh. my grandma, my mom. So we were very, very into the whole thing. And yeah. it was, you know, a great childhood. What I What calling on did it. your mom have? Was she like uh, on a stake level? Or? She played piano for p primary, but she would, for like stake plays, she would oh, be the ones that she would help write them. And yeah. Stuff? Wow. And the songs and just very like theater, musical theater wow. type. And thing. your grandma was talented that way too, wasn't yes, she? Yes, she yeah. was, yeah, you're like the orchestrator. Yeah. and. Yeah, just really, oh, really see. fun. So Mormonism was your whole life as far as you knew go, growing up? It really was, uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> uh, but I remember um, we, our, we didn't talk much about 
Joseph Smith. I think it was always Heavenly Father based. Really? And I also remember um, never feeling accountable to the bishop. I always felt accountable to my parents. Oh, so that's that, interesting. Yeah, and I think that probably made things easier for now, me. Now, was this before age 12 or after? or um, Just always. My parents, we were very close, and we talked about everything, and it was never... I think they made sure to to say, you know, we're here for you. You don't need to oh. go into the bishop and tell him this or that. And Interesting, because, you know, yeah. when we have in the young men's program, young women's programs, when kids turn 12 and 13, then they're usually interviewed every right. six months or once a year by the second counselor and then right. so on up through age 16 when the bishop interviews them and right. gets a little more serious, I right. guess, when right. <laughs> older and all. But right. So you didn't, uh, you don't remember going into those? I, I would being go accountable in, a little no. Bit? Oh. And at that time, everything was kind of fraying anyway. Yeah. My dad was had left and What do you recall so about was, that time frame? I recall, um, I feel like if I have anything to offer <laughs> in this interview, which is not much, but oh, yeah, yeah. if I have anything, it's that I could have, my sisters and I really could have been um, casualties of a, of a marriage that was kind of being torn apart by the Mormon church. And my parents were so seamless in their way that they supported and loved us no matter what we chose to do. That's sweet. And isn't I think it? we get so many emails of people wondering how to go about, you know, they've left the church. How do I go about it with my kids, with my wife? Yeah. And, you know, if I wanted to participate in the Mormon church, my mom or my dad was there to support me in that, even though he didn't attend. And if I didn't want to, my mom was there to support me in that, even though she did. And it was, they both kind of put their own selves yeah. on the back burner. And um, where, like you say, you could have been a casualty of, of, of the whole process yeah, if they had been more. For sure. Because they allowed you the freedom to think and to grow. And yes, it's I guess they trusted God. Yeah, <laughs> it's it must have been brutal for them. Yeah. You know, let alone the problem solving in their marriage, but to have to go about it with us as yeah. their daughters. And they just really were awesome. So yeah. I thank them. I have the most respect for them. Well, and maybe that is a good lesson for others that, because there's a lot of families where we, we're aware of a lot of women that have left the church and then the husbands are upset right. or vice versa. Right. And I don't know what happens sometimes to the kids in that, yeah. uh, especially if they fight a lot. But you, they allowed you to think what you wanted to and then oh, yeah. they also kept it away from you maybe yeah. the troubles that they did you did you notice a change in your dad I, as i've we were talking with delaney you were you were you one of the two girls that he was waiting for coming out of the gym that day when he had his experience i think i was <laughs> Probably. i was and, gymnastics yeah and did you sense a change in him or that he was going yes. through something i sensed a huge change I saw a change. Yeah. He was he was free suddenly and he was different. I he was he was just free to be himself. Yeah. That's the only way I can put it. And That's it's what... like I don't even really think we realized it as it was happening, but suddenly he wasn't he wasn't tied to all these things that were weighing him down yeah. and he had a new freedom, so. To trust in God and yeah. Jesus and not be burdened by the law and everything yeah. else and, and the guilt right. that, that comes along with that. Right. Yeah. And, but in that, we were still attending the church and. Were you also going to both churches? Did you go to I, the Christian church? No, I actually, I was mainly going to the Mormon church. Delaney oh. was younger when it happened. So as she got older into high school where she was Christian both. church, yeah, she was uh -huh. doing both. So I was kind of just the Mormon church. And then... Now, did you feel judgmental at all with that? Were you thinking, oh, I'm still a good girl going to Mormon church and you're 
wrong going to Christian church? Or just... Oh, no, I no? don't, I don't okay. think so. I think, oh, good. Okay. no, I think um, my parents set a good example in accepting yeah. each other, oh, and no matter where you're at. And, you know, my dad really, even though he didn't believe in it, he would drive us to church and he would yeah. talk to us about it and support us and tell us what he thought, but lovingly and, you know, just just love was just abounded in our house. And that That's terrific. is God. I mean, yeah. that was God in them. So, Well, and he probably him. knew what you may be going through after 40 years that he spent in the church, yes, too. Yes, so definitely. He, he, he knew it. And, you know, it's hard when some of us that go through this process for a long time, then it we expect other people to go through it real quickly yeah. when we tell them about it. Oh, for and sure. And that just doesn't always happen. You no. need to let God work His, yes. His will in, in our hearts. Absolutely. And so Absolutely. so uh, you went to primary and then young women, I guess. And yes. did you go to camps? And Yes, did all the, youth all the stuff. All stuff huh? Loved it, you know. And when I finally decided to leave or that I didn't believe in it, it was hard because you grow up so close to so many yeah. people and there's such like a family feel to the Mormon church. The culture is incredible. Yeah. And you think you're gonna marry <laughs> certain boys and you're gonna, you know, you have this whole idea set in yeah. your head and you know that that's not gonna happen and to leave that is was difficult, but I wouldn't trade it for yeah. the world. Did you lose friends over this? Sure. Did yeah. You? It just would, is never the same. Yeah. And once they find out that you Sure. Yeah. yeah. And it didn't help that we had the ministry going, so yeah. that I think made things even It's not even well, harder. why can't you just go away if you right. want to believe that, but just go away and don't make any noise. Right, you right. Know, it's hard for us to do because we know what yeah. You know, how, how, how deceived we are. Definitely. Now, you also went on this uh, youth conference here to Salt Lake with Delaney. Yes. And, and that was after I, I graduated high school and I went to Europe with my older sister. Oh. And we backpacked throughout Europe and it was. Was a that very, a neat experience? Oh, it was neat and it was trying <laughs> as all heck. <laughs> was it? But. Um, I ended up being born again through that experience. I came home after kind of struggling, not knowing what I thought, not ever really feeling like um, anything was my own. And I came back just seeing the world completely different and really? God was in me. And I knew that my relationship with him was mine and it was not my parents or the churches or whatever. Really? So I had this big experience and then I went to youth conference. <laughs> oh, well, after tell us having... about the experience a little bit. Is that... It was just, I was brought to my knees on this trip and I was with my older sister who at the time was a full blown atheist and not afraid to tell, tell talk, about talk about that. About She's now a believer, amazingly. It's yeah. praise God, but um, yeah, and just kind of, it was really... So you were having to really think things through. Yeah, it was hard. Yeah. And, you know, years of just wondering and all came to fruition on this trip. And it's, I came home and I got breakfast with my dad and I told him I'd been born again, which must have really been cool for him because he's thinking <laughs> we're going to, you know, marry in the temple or whatever. <laughs> and I told him I want to come to Utah. I was going to go to school in San Francisco and I said, I want to come to Utah and help the ministry. It's so it's all this change and, wow. and then Delaney and I decided to go to this youth conference and yeah, so it was about that. really eye opening, really weird things happened. Like I remember we were on the bus and, and one of the leaders wrote on a piece of paper, I believe that Joseph Smith is a true and true prophet. And I believe in the Book of Mormon to be true. And he put this X and a thing and he had everybody sign it. Like we were okay, signing this okay. contract yeah. of, and I remember thinking he's only doing this because we're on this bus. I really, maybe that's not why, but I just felt so, it's like he wanted to get proof that 
you know, interesting. We're saying that we believe in Joseph Smith and kind of commit to it or something. Yeah, huh? and Delaney and I are looking at each other, <laughs> and I signed it because I didn't know for sure what else to do. Peer group and everything else. I felt so guilty for so long though, and I because I didn't believe. I knew I didn't believe in Joseph Smith. I knew I didn't believe in the Bible. And this guy comes up to us and says, are you going to sign it? And our friends are looking. And so I signed it and just felt like such a failure. <laughs> and I remember telling my dad, he was in Utah doing the show. And I got lunch with him. And he said, I said, what does it mean that I signed that? And he said, it doesn't mean anything. Yeah. I said, what is that? It doesn't mean anything. It's, you know, in your heart what, you know, God knows your heart. And you did, it does <laughs> not mean a thing. And I think that's a really good lesson to, for yeah. people to remember. You mentioned something interesting earlier about the differences between, you grew up, uh, well, with your dad, but then the girls were in the home and you had this female pride and all that you right. were talking about. girl power. But you had two or three things that kind of were interesting thoughts about uh, the differences between young men and young women, even in the church, and, and even older. Oh, yes. I mean, uh, first of all, of course, the girls don't hold the priesthood and the men do. Right. But you were mentioning right. the temple and... What was yeah, that? I think I was probably born somewhat of a feminist, and I rebelled <laughs> quite loudly against some of the the things in the Mormon Church. But the um, yeah, I remember being bothered that that the boys would play basketball uh, during mutual when we had to do personal progress. That really bothered me. And all that memorizing and stuff. All the memorizing, so. just, you know, very, very serious for the girls to have to, you know. And yeah. I just thought, I want to play basketball. And they're playing basketball. <laughs> and you wanted to. Yeah. And yeah. I remember this one really bothered me was that the men could know the women's name in the temple, but the women can't know the men's. I don't know how I dealt with that either, but it just seemed logical. It just seemed normal. Yeah. <laughs> but well, of course, I was the guy, so you know, right. I, knew, <laughs> I knew Carla's name, and she didn't know mine. I, mean, I love that you're willing to admit that. Yeah. I mean, you're the guy. It's, yeah. Why would? Yeah. You don't think about it, but it's. But that bothered you, huh? Even you just, at you, a young age, my parents were were open about what would go on in the temple, and yeah. I just remember even then being like, "What? Why can't we know the?" <laughs> That's now, did you even know about polygamy th at that point, or that, that I'm not the church had? I'm not sure I did. Yeah. But then, once I started learning, I learned, you know, so much from Heart of the Matter myself, and just yeah, what, like how, how are women in particular? It it really blows They're my mind that more class. don't yeah. don't question it. But I, you They're know, it's very difficult. To the priesthood yeah. and and they end up being like in polygamy even now the polygamists and there's just unbelievable stories but yeah. they have to have men have to have two or three wives in order to get to heaven or yeah. something and yeah. we think god yes is married to all these women it's isn't it it's really it's <laughs> not a yeah pretty picture it isn't but we've met different women who have come out of polygamy and the bravery that that takes and isn't just that amazing amazing yeah. it's and the horror stories yeah people yeah. I mean people who are willing to seek and question and go where God leads it is such an inspiring thing to yeah. meet them because you're like yeah and it's, they all say it's, it's all awesome. in the name of God I they, know they do the polygamy yeah. so what else have you kind of learned now you've been in this in your father's ministry now for several years so yes what have you seen and what changes have you oh my goodness experienced? um I've seen that in a in a very real way I'm happy that we had the Mormon experience because just by contrast or <laughs> by contrast mm -hmm. and just to now be able to view God um, and the Bible out of out completely out of a religious context I don't have any sort of yeah. religious you know and I feel like growing up Christian would be really hard in some way because you're not born a Christian. Nobody's born a Christian. It has to become your own at some point. And to mm -hmm. have to realize when that happens, I feel like it's almost easier to leave the Mormon church and, oh, I come to God, and rather than, you know, it yeah. just... So 
I see we, you know, you meet a lot of people and, and they just want that relationship with God. They don't want anything else. And that is such a beautiful thing to see yeah. in people. Yeah, we do have people that leave the church that end up being agnostic yeah. or atheist, and that's not good. And we, yeah. I always appreciated your dad's telling people, don't trust me, don't For trust sure. what I'm saying, yes. look it up, but trust the Bible, yes. trust Jesus, trust God. Definitely. So did you sense a difference between the Mormon Jesus and the Christian Jesus? <laughs> oh yeah, the Mormon Jesus, I'm not even sure. I, he was my older brother. That's what I remember most. Kind of a, just... I mean, I don't want to say he's a footnote, but he's just kind of... Yeah. Even in the temple, and I don't... I guess you haven't really been through a session of the temple. But, right, right. But especially in the temple, he's just not... He's, he's not very important. He yeah. just kind of runs errands and stuff, and yeah. it's just kind of funny. Yeah. yeah. And now he's everything, you know. He's oh. just... And he deserves our worship because of what yeah. he did for us that we couldn't do for ourselves. Yes. But as Mormons, we just didn't appreciate that. No. Yeah. He brings such freedom and and love and, <laughs> you know, yeah. it's really, yeah. Well, gosh, uh, there's actually a bunch of things. You were, you were um, let's see, you were... Um, <laughs> When did you first visit a Christian church? Do you remember? Was that did I, your mom or dad take you? First visited. I think we all went. We went as a family, and we went to Calvary Chapel, Costa Mesa, yeah. where my dad went to what school did, of ministry. What did you think of that? Oh, I thought it was weird. Yeah. I thought it was. You have music. Uh, uh, band yeah, and... it was standing in the hands, and we. It was. It was very surreal. Very yeah. strange, but. Um, but worshiping Jesus, probably. Yeah, yeah. Right? And I feel like I got used to it. I mean, it's, Yeah. I wasn't sure not to say which was better because the Mormon church I always thought was so quiet and, <laughs> but yeah. And reverence and, and reverence. everything. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. But yeah, we went to Calvary Chapel and we would go there every once in a while. But um, I can't say I've had much experience in Christian churches. Just go to campus. Other than your, and your dad, of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. But have, and and you've seen people, of course, transition and make changes in their life. Yes. Have, uh, do you recall some of those experiences that you had? And oh. I mean, do you work? You probably work with some of the questions that your dad gets and oh, stuff yeah. too. We have met so many people, and it's been. Um, such a blessing to yeah. be a part of the ministry yeah. and to, you know, have my dad um, around all the time. I yeah. get to hang out with him all the time. <laughs> and he's such a, you know, just it's been really, really great. Yeah. And um, people just finding freedom in God and truth in God and His Word, and letting the other stuff just <laughs> fall is. Can such you believe a great... He's doing all that though? And... It's insane. Yeah. It's insane to think where our family what once was and where we are now. It's yeah. like, how how did that happen? <laughs> oh and my, He oh has been gosh. so faithful yeah. that we all have relationships with him and that we've stuck together <laughs> through our differences. And I mean, it's just, he is so capable of making these things right. And I mm. just challenge people to hang on to him through the hard times because it's, it's incredible to look back yeah. and see what has transpired. I asked Delaney about some reunions that you go to. Have you interacted with family much? And oh yeah, our you... family, it was bad terms for a while, but um, it's Just better now. Just because of what's ha what, that you'd left the church, I guess. Yeah, and, uh, it's, you know, it's not easy. Yeah. and. For both parties, it's just awkward. Did you have cousins that you've talked to and stuff? And yeah. <laughs> I, it's funny the way people, if they're having doubts, they'll tell you. Yeah. If they'll feel safe with because telling they you. Because they yeah. appreciate the fact that you'll understand and listen. Yeah. yeah. I've had a few people say, you know, Earl, you're the only person I can talk to about this stuff. Yeah, <laughs> isn't it funny? Yeah. And it, yeah. 
Because you can't bring it up at church. That would be right, you know, right. Be slammed down. And, right. Yeah. But God has worked miracles even in our extended family. He's made, he's just brought a lot of peace where there was not peace before. And I think that is just evidence of, of the love that is in us because of him and yeah. just trying to take every day and, you know, well, Cassidy, loving. we're getting close to the end. My goodness, you know, it, does it goes go so fast. What, uh, what have you learned? What do you want to share? What, uh, what do you want to tell people? What have I learned? <laughs> um, I think that life is meant to be lived and um, to question and to challenge and to seek yeah. Um, is not something religion often uh, <laughs> encourages to do, us right. to do, but think a little bit, so, right? Yeah. But it is what eventually will bring you to a knowledge and understanding of God, and to live is Christ. Like yeah. there is no living without Jesus, yeah. and it's my favorite, one of my favorite scriptures: to live is Christ, and to die is gain. And not only physical death, but just dying every day to yourself and your will and trying to love and trying to have faith and seek after that. So I challenge people to just, try, you know, <laughs> try to do that and yeah, look I, to God. I love the one, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Oh, and so there light. should be such freedom. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. And it, it was never meant to be otherwise right right <laughs> not, right not a burden and not uh, we should be able to be free in christ and yes uh, that's a great freedom there are new eyes that come with knowing who god is yeah. and you can't understand it if if you haven't experienced it but he is faithful and he loves all and he will bring all to his good purpose and i trust in that so much and you know, um, just hope. Well, you've certainly people. done a lot in your in your few years here <laughs> on the earth and all, and uh, you've been no. busy girl, and <laughs> I'm sure you've got wonderful plans, and uh, oh, I'm sure well. you you'll continue helping your dad, I guess. Oh and, yeah, you know. I love it. We're yeah. we're a great team, and Delaney's been up here with us, that which has been awesome. Yeah. She's so much better at technical. She yeah, directs she and does the. She's awesome at it. So it's been really a a joy. Mm -hmm. yeah. Cassidy, thanks so much for coming and sharing. Thank and you, Earl. I'm sure there's things we could have mentioned or should have perhaps, but I'm sure no, we trust hopefully where we said, went. And, yeah. God, God took care of it, I'm sure. So Definitely. Well, thanks, Cassidy. And again, thanks for all the producing you did on our first couple of years oh, with this show, and I appreciate it Thank so much. And we'll see you next time here on the Ex-Mormon Files. Mm -hmm.